So we're here at Red Rock Micro, and one of the things that we didn't get covered correctly when we were at NAB, and I'm glad that they're here, was this new crazy-ass follow focus. Now, a follow focus oftentimes is, is not necessarily something that has to be remote or digital. Uh, it, is a, it is a mechanical piece. Let me, let me grab this one over here. So, let me, uh, so if you look at this here, this is a mechanical follow focus. And what you have here is you, you clip this on under your camera, and these little gears will attach, when you have the right kind of camera that has the gears, these little gears will attach um, to your focus. And then what you have is this nice big dial that allows you to, to really have a lot of control. It also allows you to make marks. So you can, you can uh, mark something that I want to focus from here to somewhere else over time. Because a lot of times when someone's doing a follow focus, they're not looking at the monitor trying to figure out whether they're in focus. They made marks of where they had to be at certain points in time, and then they get there. And so, um, so that's how this, th this mechanical uh, version works. But sometimes you don't want to be that close to the person. They're on a steady cam, or, they're, or it's on a jib, or it's, or it's in a lot of different places where, or you know, big dolly, and you don't want someone running next to it trying to, trying to uh, pull focus. And so what you need is a remote. And there's a lot of them, and a, most of them are uh, uh, fairly expensive. And so, uh, what, uh, of course, what always happens with Red Rocks Micro is they figure out how to do something really cool for a lot less money than what we're used to. And, uh, and that's what this is. And how did you guys come up with this? Well, uh when we originally, uh, way back when, when Red Rock put out our first product, it was a 35 millimeter lens adapter, and that allowed you to have a standard video camera and use still lenses on the front. And what happened was you got uh, shallow depth of field, right? The ability to sort of uh, remove the subject from the background and make the background blurry. And what happened right when that happened was everyone, it's what they call the film look. Everyone loves that look. It's not the video look, but now you have what's called critical focus. There's only a certain part of your frame is in focus. And then what happened was everybody didn't have the skills to run focus. Right. And, and that's been the big problem is, is that as soon as you, uh, when you get into whether you're in a 5D or whatever, like when we're shooting with this camera, this chip is so small that almost everything's in focus. So it's not very difficult. Now it all looks like everything's in focus. And that's fine for, this, for what we're shooting here. But when you're trying to do that film, you want to have it be something that is, uh, you know, you want to have that. But it's a lot more challenging when you're shooting on a RED, when you're shooting on a 5D, when you're shooting on a, on a uh, you know, some kind of adapter. Uh, you are, um, you, you now you have razor thin margins that you have to hit. Yeah, and I, I don't think that people fully appreciate now with these new 5Ds and the Canon uh, DSLRs that shoot video, how shallow that focus is. And sometimes it's like a fraction of an inch. So managing that is really critical. So one is, we realized that people needed some sort of ability to manage focus. We came out with the micro follow focus some years ago, and that certainly was, it helped a lot. But it, as you pointed out, it doesn't work in all situations. So when we set about doing a wireless follow focus, we really wanted to do two things. One is we wanted to build a high quality product that, as you said, is affordable. So per, people who are normal human beings, you know, tax rebate, something like that, could afford to buy one. Just so you know, today, a good follow focus, a good wireless follow focus will run you somewhere between, say, Thirty and forty thousand dollars for the professional ones, even up to eighty thousand dollars. I mean, these are not affordable by normal human beings. Most of us just consider, well, we'll rent it. Yeah, absolutely. So in the Hollywood set, if you're going to drop a thousand bucks a week uh, for for renting something, that's not a big deal. But for average human beings, that's a lot of scratch. I mean, that's more than your mortgage, right? The second thing that we wanted to do, which I think really makes this particular uh, micro remote really unique, is we wanted to give people an understanding of how focus works and give them some visual feedback so that they could actually understand and be able to become good focus pullers. You and I both know it takes a decade for someone to be really good at pulling focus, and it's one of the hardest jobs on the set. And we don't all have that luxury of time and expertise to do this. So how do we actually give you a little bit of technology to enable that? And that's part of the reason why we came out with an iPhone or iPod touch interface that graphically shows you what's going on with focus so that you can understand it and be able to really pull accurate focus. One of the mistakes that I think a lot of people do when they try to build low cost products is they try to emulate things that are existing in the professional world. And frankly, a lot of that stuff looks like it came out of the Sputnik program. I mean, it's really Really old school technology. You may got the LED readouts, and we sort of looked at it, and we were looking at our iPhones and thinking, "There's no reason why we need to reinvent that wheel. We can actually do much better with a less expensive tool that they probably already own." So, so now what you have here is you you, you can set the f-stop, of course, and it's going to give you a sense, some feedback of of exactly what what your depth of field is. Right. So let me just kind of walk you through this demo real quick. The system that would be running this is this system right over here. You'll see that we actually have a Canon uh, 5D. It's got a bunch of gear around it, but essentially some of it is uh, fancier lenses. Some of it's the Red Rock rig. Some of it is actually uh, this, the system that this controls. You have a part on the top that actually shows a real-time readout of the distance to the subject. It's called a micro tape. It's a sonar-based rangefinder. 
And what we see here, this wireless control, as I'm moving this physical handle, you can see that it gives me both a numerical readout right here of the distance and a graphical readout. So I can actually sort of see that I'm moving around the, the lens barrel as I'm seeing this. Now what's really cool is, I mentioned before about this micro tape, the sonar rangefinder. So basically you point it at a subject and it will tell you it's eight feet, six inches away. That actually shows up in this interface as this little red dot. So one is, all I need to do to, in order to create accurate focus is I just simply need to line these two up and I know that where I'm focused and where that sonar is pointing at is exactly the same. So when in doubt, you can just do that. Absolutely, and the nice thing is it's kind of, I, I want to be silly and say it's like a video game, but it kind of is, right? I mean, it's something that normal human beings can understand to do. The second thing that you'll see here is there's a blue arc, and this is the available sharpness for depth of field. So you don't have to be exactly on it, but as long as you're in that range, you'll know that it'll be acceptably sharp. So what's great about this is you don't have to go through the ASC manual and understand depth of field and all those calculations. You have a visual readout that you can see intuitively. And I think now that you and I have explained it and people are listening to this, they would get it, right? And they would understand how to focus and knowing that if I change my aperture, it would actually open up my depth of field or, or make it more shallow. So all of those things kind of come together into a visual interface that regular people can understand and then learn how to pull focus. And it's just, a, I mean, I just think that it's such an elegant solution and it's something that I hope we see more of. There's people using the, the iPhone as an interface, and not only that, it allows you guys to think about the creative aspects. And you're not trying to figure out how to do an LCD screen. You're not figuring out how to make a touch screen. You're not, you're not having to figure out how to get the graphics to display and what kind of Linux processor you're going to use and, and all those other things. Instead, you guys get to do what you're good at, which is make this stuff simple and easy and let Apple you know, make the stuff, uh, make do all the, the handiwork of, of actually getting it to the screen. Yeah, so uh, uh, Apple, of course, doesn't make it easy to go through the certification process, but once we get there, it's wonderful. I mean, I'll give you a great example of a feature that we were able to add. Uh, we're actually showing it here for the first time uh, that we didn't have to spend a lot of time building the display, and it's the ability to do soft uh, focus points and then ramp between them. So I can kind of dial up my focus. I can actually press this button. You'll see it drops down a little blue mark. I can move this a little bit further to my next focus point, click this, there's a little blue mark that drops there. I can press this button and it brings up, oops, there we go, I gotta reach around, brings up my interface for the ramping between those two points. I can control the speed, I control when I can do it. I mean, those kind of features, you're, five years ago was unthinkable and anything less than a package that probably you or I absolutely couldn't afford without mortgaging our house. And now we're talking about adding these features into software and because it's an Apple certified app, just download the update from iTunes. I mean, what a great and novel way to think about cinema accessories. And the thing is, is that is that now we're, we're talking about this idea where when you think of a better idea, it's not this huge process because it's all digital. You know, it's not a huge process. It's not reburning the EEPROMs. It's not doing, you know, doing whatever it is. It's just simply down, go to iTunes, download the thing, and you get this great solution that, that interacts with the, with the camera. Yeah, so I, I think, Alex, more than anyone, you can appreciate sort of how even though we in the real world pick iPhones and iPads now and just love these applications, how it really fundamentally is going to change the way that the cinema world works. The idea that you can download a piece of software and actually provide an update is actually a completely new concept in cinema, and now here we are. Right, and, 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 I, and I think this is one of, the, one of the first tools that I've seen where that's totally integrated. And I have to admit, this is when, when I talk about how excited I am about the iPhone, especially about the iPad, uh, and, and all the things that it's going to bring, this is the kind of stuff that I'm thinking about. This is the kind of stuff that, that I get excited about. I mean, what I really want is just a camera that has, just so I can slide my iPhone into and, and then run the camera. <laughs> yeah, we love it too. So again, I mean, part of it was affordability, but part of it was the idea that we're not all going to be professional cinematographers, and how do we take that kind of expertise and put it into a system that not only is easy to use, but it's with using software and interfaces that we're, we're now growing up with. And if you are an expert, it's still a great tool, and it's a great inexpensive tool to get a lot of this stuff done. And if you're not, you can use it too. Absolutely. These are, these are pro-level features. I mean, a lot of these features are not even found in the, in the most expensive follow focus you see today. So absolutely for professionals and amateurs alike. And we really, our goal is to bring that capability to anybody and a price they can afford. So this is coming out in uh, July. So definitely check it out from Red Rock Micro.